Good morning, dear friends. This is a brand new day given to us so that we may glorify Him because that is the one purpose for which He has created us. We must glorify our Creator and our God. And therefore, let us give ourselves a few minutes of silence and listen to the voice of our God who still speaks in small, still voices. And may we hear the word for us today. And let us go forth and do according to his word. Today's meditation is a continuation of our yesterday's meditation, which is God's two creative miracles, found in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 2 and then chapter 6. These are, there are two miracles. In chapter 2, we have the miracle of the water being turned into wine at the wedding at Cana of Galilee. And thus bringing cheer and uh, joy to that household and also to the guest. And uh, then in the desert, in chapter 6, the miracle of bread and fish. And how multitude multitude of people ate with just five loaves and two fishes available. And what miracle happened there is something amazing. And these two miracles combined together, we have a revelation. And let us find out what the revelation is. We talked about yesterday a little bit, but today we shall continue the meditation. The combined miracle of five loaves and two fishes and water turning into wine gives us a revelation of uh, Jesus Christ. What and who Jesus Christ really is. And we discovered that he is God in the flesh. The bread represents the body. And the wine represent his blood. And combined together, the blood entered into the body means the body receives life. Because the Bible says life is in the blood. So here we have the body and the blood. And we have this revelation. And undeniable truth that Jesus Christ, when he was born as a man here on earth, was God in the flesh. Now through these two miracles, the disciples learned two valuable lessons. Number one, they could never outgive God. They could never outgive Jesus. And secondly, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, to withhold anything from God is to close the hands of God. Now, in Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6, the wise Solomon says, In the morning, Sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. At the end of it all, for example, what do we see in the desert after the miracle of the bread and fish? Each of these disciples had a basket filled with bread. And you remember how they started it to begin with. The miracle happened in the giving away of the bread and the fish to the crowd. That is when the miracle happened. And in the case of water turning into wine, the same obedience is visible. Jesus told the servants, 
to fill the water jars. Now these stone water jars could hold from 75 to 115 liters of water. And the Bible says, the, 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 the servants, in obedience to what Jesus told them to do, commanded them to do, they filled these, these stone jars uh, with water to the dream. And that means exercising their faith to the maximum. They didn't doubt and saying, Are, what, this is going, what is going to happen? Just fill the water. Uh, so let us fill half. Uh, let us not waste our time. We don't know what is going to happen. But no, they didn't think that way. Jesus told them, because the mother of Jesus, Mary, told these servants, Listen, if my son comes and tells you to do anything, whatever he tells you, you do it. And so that advice they remembered. And so they filled it to the dream, to the overflowing level. And that is exercising a faith. Now, uh, then the next thing we see is Jesus commanding these servants again, telling these servants again, now draw uh, from these jars the water that you filled and uh, take it to the master of ceremony. And that's what these servants did. And there again, they exercise faith without uh, being ashamed of. Now in this miracle, you will notice one thing. The, disciple, the, the servants did not know what they were drawing. They thought they were drawing the water. And that is exactly they did. Because we do not see Jesus employing any means in performing these miracles. What do I mean? In most miracles, he employed some means. Either he commanded the, the demons to get out, or he reached out his hands and touched, or he told the patients what to do, and uh, a word was given. And so you notice uh, some uh, means were employed in all these miracles. Uh, like in the case of uh, uh, the fish and the bread. He lifted along with the basket and blessed the bread. I gave thanks. And then yesterday I have explained to you how the miracle working power entered into every piece of bread and also the fish and um, so these servants had to exercise faith at the time of filling the water and also at the time of taking the water again they exercise faith when they drew the water and taken the water to the master of ceremony now the miracle came when the disciples in the desert um, and the servants at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, the servants, uh, both the servants and the disciples, exercised their faith and acted by faith and obedience. They, they had to. They had to exercise faith and they had to obey. And faith combined with obedience is usually the, uh, the, the way of where to miracle. <clears throat> you remember the paralyzed man lying for 30, 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. Now Jesus simply told him to rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And he had to do it. If he had, if he had kept on uh, lying there, he would not have experienced that miracle. Oh, I, uh, 38 years I never walked and my limbs are so, so stiff and uh, it is, it is, it is um, paralyzed and I won't be able to stand up. I'm, Forget about carrying my bed. 
if he had given that negative thoughts and then act on that thought, he would not have walked again. But he believed and by faith he obeyed. And when, this, when he did what Jesus commanded him to do in obedience, the miracle happened. And he was healed. And that is the case even today. And my friends, the disciples give, gave away the bread and fish, and the servants gave away the water. Both acted by faith, and they have seen amazing miracles. Now the lessons. The little they had, the little they gave away to Jesus became much. More than they needed. What did the disciples have? They did not have anything, but they found the lunchbox of a small boy and that's what they brought to Jesus. And whatever little in that box contained became much more than needed when they placed it in the hand of Jesus. And the simple ordinary water became the costliest and the best wine they have ever tasted. And I want you to think along with me, those of you who are listening. Give yourself away. Participate in a miracle. Do you want to participate in a miracle? He can still do it. Give yourself away. And all you have. Give. And remember the widow's cake in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 to 16. I encourage you to read this passage after this meditation, even before you start your work. And through the day, try to meditate and think about what you, have, what you are hearing right now and what you have read in God's word and also in the New Testament, both in the Old and New Testament. Our God is still the same. For Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and he shall be the same forever. He is an unchanging God, my friends. And you can never outgive God. Jesus gave away himself. Think of Jesus. He gave away himself. And the only two things he possessed in this earthly life. What were they? His body and his blood. And what did he do even with these two? He gave them away freely for humanity. The body was broken. And the blood was shed for the remission of the sins of every single member of a human race. His body and his blood. Today, he has a body. And it is a worldwide body. What is it? The church. I'm not referring to any denominations or any church, anybody's building. The church, Jesus said, he will build. The church of Jesus Christ that he himself is building. And my friends, salvation is still flowing into humanity through the ministry of his church. Healing is still flowing into humanity today through his church. And today, when he was here on earth, he directly used to go and meet people and stretch out his hand and touch them and commanded the, 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 the demons to leave. And he did everything directly. But today, he does the same thing without any, 
any change. And he said, even greater things you shall do than I have done because you believe in me and because you are following me. And today he's doing the same thing. Through, and it, 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 the power flows through his body, the church. So the church in this world is, 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 is the means by which Jesus let his power to save souls and to heal and to deliver and to bless people today with a new life and a new power for them to do what Jesus Christ has began to do. And this is his expectation from you and from me. So give yourself away. And again I say, give. God is still the same. He is no debtor of a people or person. He shall never be a debtor. Experience the miracle of multiplied bread, multiplied strength, multiplied talents and abilities, and multiplied ministry, and multiplied prayer, and multiplied ministry of healing people and bringing people to the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ. And my friends, to God there is no clergy and no laity, no separation. What any minister called reverend or doctor, reverend, bishop, can do, an ordinary believer also can do. Because you also are a member of the body of Jesus Christ. And his power today flows through his body. So the church is supposed to be the carrier of the power and authority of the risen Lord Jesus Christ over sin and over sicknesses and over all demonic activities, witchcraft, all devil's power and all evil forces. You are an instrument in God's hand. Will you give yourself an exercise by faith and in obedience what Jesus commanded us to do? God bless you today as you do it. Let this day be a, a a day of transformation into your life. And this is my prayer. And may the Holy Spirit anoint you. And let you be filled with the Holy Spirit. And His presence is with you. Amen. God bless you, my friends. This is a great day. And have a good time serving the Lord. Amen.